So after experimenting with the vocoder quite a lot, I discovered something kind of interesting. I don't really know how to describe it. You'll just have to check it out. Hey guys, Slink here with another video. And lately I've been thinking a lot about vocoders. How can you get a good sort of vocal vocoder sound with a vocoder in Ableton. And it's such a cool plugin, what else can you do with the vocoder? Well, let's talk about using a vocoder in a traditional sense. I've got a vocal here. That's right, we ignite at the late night. Excite, insight with the game tight. It's just got a glue compressor and a ping pong reverb on there. And I've also written some chords here. There's no instrument on here yet. So let's drag an operator onto there and we'll set the waveform to soar on the first oscillator. Turn the filter off. Let's just take a listen to the vocals. And actually, we're probably going to want to um, glue compress these a little bit. So if you don't know what a vocoder is, basically it takes one signal and modulates it with another signal. So we can set the carrier signal to be an external source and choose anything in our project. But for this example, we're going to choose the chords that we've just written there. And now we can play the vocals with the chords muted. And it sounds like this. That's right, we should at the late night. It's right inside with the game tight. That's right, we should at the late night. Sounds pretty cool. But we can do a lot of things in, in this plugin to make it sound a lot better. To start with, we'll click this enhance button. What that does is it normalizes the incoming signal from the chords, so it should sound a little nicer. That's right, we should bite at the late night. That's right, we should bite. You can see it's kind of like flattened out that signal. It's a little bit more high content. It just generally enhances the sound. <laughs> uh, also, just really quick, we'll do a little bit of EQing here. You can like EQ inside the plugin using these little yellow bars, but I find that to be a bit tricky to get it to sound just right. So I like to leave all that set to max and then just EQ with a EQ8 here. We'll turn the highs up a lot. That's right, we should bite at the late night. Inside, inside, put the game tight. That's right, we should bite. Cool, so you can also set the range of uh, the frequencies that the vocoder is affecting. So if we turn the range all the way up to 18,000 hertz, That's right, we should play at the late night. you get a little bit more high content. We can also turn this up to say, what do we have this set at? About 120, so we'll do the same there. That's right, we should play at the late night. That's right, we should play at the late night. And you can also increase the number of bands. So each one of these little uh, yellow lines is a band. So if I set that down to four bands, you can barely hear what the vocals are actually saying, what the words are. But if we crank this up to 40 bands, we're going to get a lot more resolution in that voice. That's right, we unite at the late night. Inside, inside, with the game tight. That's right. And I think that sounds pretty good like that. We can also tweak the release time. We'll try turning it down to make a bit more of a tighter sound. That's right, we unite at the late night. Inside, inside, with the game tight. And also the depth knob is pretty important. If I turn this all the way to the left, it's going to sort of decrease the volume of the vocals. And if I turn it all the way to the right, it's going to kind of increase the volume of the vocals, but it's a nice way to sort of mix the two. So if I turn this down. Sounds pretty good like that. Let's try it um, on the increase here. That's right, we should play at the late night. It's like inside with the game That's right. So it really depends on your preference. I like to set it at around 110. That's right, we unite at the late night. And then the format knob really changes the sound drastically. It'll make the vocals sound higher pitched or lower pitched. That's right, we unite at the late night. It's like inside with the game tight. That's right, we unite at So let's just turn that down a little bit like that. I think that sounds pretty good. And we haven't really talked about the chords, it's just playing a saw wave. We can also adjust this as well. So let's try a square wave, for example. That's right, we should play at the late night. Inside, inside, with the game tight. Sounds pretty cool. It depends on what sort of vibe you're going for. One thing that really makes it sound a lot better is turning up the spread. That's right, we should play at the late night. Inside, inside, with the game tight. That's right, we should play at the late night. Oh, snap, that sounds really good. I like it a lot. So that's pretty much how I would use the vocoder. There's one other option here called the unvoiced section. So if we turn the chords off completely, or actually I need to um, mute the clip itself. I just clicked the clip and then press zero. Someone's gonna ask me in the comments. <laughs> Basically, yeah, let's turn the unvoiced section up. 
You can see it's kind of catching the S's and the T's and just sort of the breathiness of the voice there. So if you find that you're having a hard time understanding what the vocals are actually saying, you can try turning the unvoiced knob up. So yeah, you can really hear those S's are much more defined. All right, so let's try a vocoder on a bass line. In the carrier options here, you've got noise, external, modulator, and pitch tracking. Noise is just a noise generator and will modulate our bass line with some noise. Sounds kind of weird, but just a saw wave playing out of this operator. There's also um, pitch tracking, which kind of tries to understand what note is playing, and then it creates its own oscillator and plays the same note and then modulates the sound with the oscillator. Kind of sounds like this. <laughs> it's a little bit weird. The most interesting one is modulator. So you can set this up so that the vocoder modulates this sound with itself, which is really interesting. Check it out. What we're going to do is, here, I'll just delete this for a second. We're going to drag in a multiband dynamics, put this in a rack, and then duplicate this chain twice and we'll call this top chain high we'll call this chain here mid and the bottom chain you guessed it low and then we'll solo those different bands on the multi-band dynamics so now we have three different chains which have been perfectly split this is the best way to split frequency into three bands in my opinion the multi-band dynamics has like a really nice crossover curve anyway so let's try the vocoder just on the mids we'll set it to modulator again Let's mess with the formant. Sounds kind of interesting. I really like it with four bands. By the way, these bands, you can kind of think of them as like little EQ bell curves like this. So imagine there's four of these across the frequency spectrum in between the range that we've got set here. There's also a bandwidth control so we can increase the width so that they almost overlap and decrease the width so there's gaps in between with this bandwidth control turning the bandwidth down so there's a gap in between each of the bands creates a notching effect which sounds really cool so let's check that out And we'll click the enhance button just for extra enhancement. <laughs> Sounds really cool. And actually, if we want an even more accurate setup here, we can take a look at the frequency split that we're doing over here. So it's 2,500 kilohertz. No, 2.5 kilohertz, so 2,500 hertz. So we can set this to the same and set this to the same so that the range matches the frequency split here. And now it sounds like this. I think it sounds pretty cool. Let's mess with the high end now. We've got that noise carrier signal, so let's try that. So now we're modulating the high frequency spectrum or this high band with noise generation here. And let's turn the release time down. You can also sort of change the way the noise sounds. And then you can just mix it with the dry wet. Sounds pretty sweet with a little bit of compression with an OTT here. It's going to sound really good. Put a glue on the end. Let's try a square wave just for funsies. 
That sounds really cool, actually. I think I prefer the solo wave, though. So definitely, this format on the mids is the one to automate. So we can map that to the macro here. And now we can just automate it over here. But I think that sounds pretty cool. I think that's an interesting, different use for a vocoder. So in this project, I've also got some drums. They sound like this. Just some big kicks and snares here. And then some sort of breakbeat stuff. And that's been sidechained with this. But let's try and do something crazy with a vocoder, <laughs> as is the theme of the video. What we're going to do is put this in a rack and create a new chain. And we'll call this chain dry. And we'll call this chain wet. So we've split the signal into two chains. Uh, one chain has a vocoder and the other chain doesn't. So let's solo the wet channel for a minute here. And we'll turn this, this side chain off. So right now we're modulating with um, the noise oscillator inside of the vocoder. Let's try with the bands down to eight or so. So we can almost create a new layer on top of these breaks. I think it sounds really cool for like thickening up your percussion layers. And you can experiment with all these settings. You can almost create a bell effect with the bandwidth. <laughs> but uh, that's just uh, another way you can use a vocoder. So after experimenting with the vocoder quite a lot, I discovered something kind of interesting and I'm going to show you right now. <laughs> I don't really know how to describe it. You'll just have to check it out. So we've got a new operator and we're going to set this up so that the arpeggiator chooses a random note and we'll set the randomness to by. So it's plus or minus our bass note. We'll create a midi clip so that it plays a, a note every 16th. Let's just take a listen to that. Oh yeah, we'll set the rate to 16th as well. And the chance of the random to 100%. <laughs> kind of weird. I know, it sounds weird. So this is cool. We've got like a control with the gate so we can shorten the notes. The idea with this is we're choosing random notes and we're going to have those random notes be modulated by the chords that we've written using, you guessed it, a vocoder. So we'll set this to external, take the audio input from chords. Now check it out. So you can hear every different note that the operator plays, it kind of gives the chords a different kind of tone, which is really interesting in my opinion. Sounds so cool. It's like this awesome, arpeggiated, random, sort of textured sound. And I think it would make for a really cool breakdown or build up in your song, you know? So there you go, there's a bunch of different ways you can use a vocoder. It's not just for vocals, you can do some really cool, interesting stuff with it. And play around, 
There's so much more you can do with a vocoder. Once you start to think of the vocoder as a simple A modulates B kind of setup, then you can really open your eyes to a lot of possibilities that the vocoder has. So play around with it. And uh, if you come up with any cool techniques, post them in the comments. Cool. Thanks for watching. Peace. Yeah, I'll be shaking when the beat drops.